Okay, so more of Summer Review 3, and this is number 5. And we've got some binomial bases, so this gets a little more complicated, but we do see these once in a while. So, again, you want to be up on these, so kind of watch what's going on. So, again, we have a, a common factor of x plus 3, and we have a 1 half and a 3 half. So, again, we use least power, so 1 half is smaller than 3 half, so that's what we factor out. So, we do the same thing, except we're dealing with binomial factors. So I'll let you kind of see what I'm doing here. So I got x plus 3 to the 1 half. And then remember, we're going to we're factoring out the 1 half because that's the least power. So I've got the 1 half here minus the 1 half I'm dividing out. And remember, when we divide, we subtract the exponents. So then I've got x plus 3 to the 3 halves, again, minus the 1 half. And then 1 half minus 1 half is just 0. And then 3 halves minus 1 half is 2 halves. And like I said, I'm, I'm writing all these extra little steps so you see what's going on. You know, like I said, you could possibly skip some of these steps. But again, be careful. So x to the 0, x plus anything to the 0 power is 1. So x plus 3 to the 0 power is 1. And then this is 2 over 2, which is 1. So this is just x plus 3, all right? Now, I did skip a step here, and I, already get, I already get, always get paranoid when I do that. Okay, this is 1, and this is minus, and this is just x plus 3. So this is a parenthesis preceded by a negative sign, so this is going to be negative x and negative 3. So you have to be careful there, but I think you could realize that this is 1, so that's just x plus 3, so I could just do that, and then I could remove that parenthesis. Okay? And then what we can do is we could simplify this because uh, we have numerical terms. So I've got uh, negative x and negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So this simplifies here. This is the same. And then you could leave it like that, but basically the way our answers were set up, they just factored out a negative sign and we made it put a negative right in front of the whole thing and made that positive x positive 2. So that's how that matches up to the answer. Let me move this over for you. So lots of times you have to match them up to a, a given or particular answer, so kind of be aware of that. Okay, so that's what goes there. Let's take a look at number six. And again, now we just have a common binomial factor. Okay, x squared plus four is our common binomial factor. And then three halves and seven halves, three halves is smaller than seven halves, so that's my least power. Three halves, so that's what I'm going to factor out. And I put it over here. So I'm going to take 3 halves minus 3 halves, okay, for the first term, because I'm factoring that out, subtracting that. And I'll take 7 halves minus 3 halves. And I just put a little over here, 7 halves minus 3 halves, which is 4 halves, which is 2. So I could kind of do a little bit of that work with the fraction. So this ends up being x squared plus 4 to the 0 power, x squared plus 4 squared. The zero power is just one, but I'll have to multiply this out because I'm going to have numerical terms here that I can simplify. Now this, in the front, this, fa this factor that I'm taking out, this is going to stay the same. Again, x anything to the zero power is one. And then if I multiply this out using my binomial multiplication, I get a, a trinomial square, x to the fourth, twice the product with this sign and then this term squared. And then I can add the 1 to the 16, and I can get 17. So here's your final answer over here. The x squared plus 4 to the 3 halves, and x to the 4th plus 8x plus 17. That's the 16 plus 1. Okay. So hopefully that wasn't too, too bad. I think you can see all that. Okay. And then number 7. Now we got some negative signs, so now it starts to get interesting. When we have these negative signs, you have double negatives, so you have to be careful. Again, my common base is x plus 5, so that's what I'm going to be able to factor out. And I have a negative 1 half and a negative 3 halves, which is the least, which is the farthest to the left in the number line, negative 3 halves. So that's what I'm going to factor out. So now we have this. So this is my x plus 5 minus 1 half, or to the negative 1 half, minus the negative 3 halves. That's what I'm factoring out. So remember, when we factor out or divide, we subtract exponents. This negative sign goes here, 
So that's that negative sign. And I got this x plus 5 to the negative 3 halves minus, again, this negative 3 halves. Okay, a negative times a negative, and I did this over here as a positive, so I got, I hope you can see this, let's move this over here, so I got this over here, I did this little exponent work over here, so I got negative one half plus three halves, which is two halves, so that's just one. So I, I simplified all this to be one, I hope that's okay. Okay, again, this would be negative one half plus 3 halves, or 3 halves minus 1 half, which is 2 halves, and that's just 1. And then over here, I've got negative 3 halves, a negative times a negative is a positive, so negative 3 halves plus 3 halves is 0. So actually, these exponents simplify to be 1 and 0. And they usually do. That's kind of built in on this. We've talked about this product rule. We've talked about what we're going to be talking about later when we do differentiation. And the way the product rule is constructed they usually do work out to be ones and zeros. That's why it's such a valuable method in simplifying. Okay, well anything to the one power is just that anything, and then anything to the zero power is just one, so I've got x plus five minus one. And that's over here. And then what I did was I put this negative exponent in the bottom, so it'd be positive, so it doesn't make it as long, it just makes it higher, or gives it more height. And then, 5 minus 1 is 4, so there's your final answer. Nice, neat answer. x plus 4 over x plus 5 to the 3 halves. So lots of times you'll get something like this after you do a process, and then you'll look in the answer section to check your work, and you'll see an answer like this, and you say, what the heck? Well, you have to do this least powers to simplify it to make it, you know, match up so you know that you did the right process. Okay? So again, remember... Cautious about, be very cautious about skipping steps because that's where you can get fouled up with all these double negatives. Okay, I hope that helps.